Hello and welcome back to Softrock uh, channel. In this video we will be showing how to install and configure the IIS Windows Web Server. This is the Internet Information Server which comes as part of as part of Windows Server. In this video uh, we will do uh, we'll be working with Windows 2019 Web Server but the process is very close across all the main ser recent servers like 2012, 2016, Windows Server 2012 and Windows Server 2016. Uh, let's get to a server that appeared earlier on. Right, here is the one of, one of the servers that I prepared earlier on. It's a development server uh, for the purpose of training. Uh, this is a Windows 2019 server. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we're going to have to do is install Internet Information Server or IIS server. So the best way to install it is to go to Server Manager. And upon launching Server Manager, you click on Add Roles and Features. Uh, that's fine if that error message comes. It just means you need to wait for a, a few seconds while it um, initializes everything. All right, so click on click on Add Roles and Features. Click Next. Click next on this one. Click next onto server roles. And here under server roles, as it's a server function, you should see IIS web server. So this is the one that we want to select. So just to give a description is web server provides a reliable, manageable and scalable web application infrastructure. So this will install the actual web server and then we can configure it later on. So at the moment we're just going to install it. So we just tick the box and um, it will ask you to add those. You just add the feature and press next. Uh, depending on the application you're going to install, you might require .NET framework. If you did require that, then you can install 3.5 .NET framework. Uh, but in this particular video, we are just going to continue with the basic site, so we don't, we're not using .NET, so we don't need to install it. But if we need to install it, then it's just not selecting that, and you can continue. There's also another feature which you may require, which is the FTP server, uh, which is also not directly part of of um, with the IIS, but um, it, it, obviously if you want to FTP from outside uh, or you want to allow other people to FTP, then you can enable the FTP server, which is normally should be in the, in the features. We'll come back to that later on. Let's just install this IIS web server, which is what this video is about. Then we'll come back to that later on. So uh, to install it, just click Next. Uh, here, uh, okay, that's fine. Uh, we're going to click Next on this one. Click Next again. And here, you, there is some additional functionality you can select. So these are the these are going to be the functionality of IIS in, in addition to what you require. So, um, for example, if you wanted HTTP re uh, redirection, 
So this is where the website redirects uh, to another website. So if you wanted to uh, a website to come to your site, and then you wanted the website to direct to another page somewhere, either on the internet or within the network infrastructure, then you would need need this. So I'll take you through the basic uh, uh, document, uh, basic uh, features, and what they are. Uh, default document. Uh, this is what the default document is going to be. So, for example, I mean, this is you need this. So it's it's to say that. If your default document was going to be index.html or whatever you wanted it to be, um, then you would, uh, so you don't need to specify in the URL. So if your URL was, URL was www.microsoft.com, you don't need to put a slash index.html, for example, or index.aspx. Uh, you don't need to do that. You can just leave it as www.microsoft.com. Uh, and the website would launch because the default document that you've configured, and I will show you that later, will say how it's going to pick that up. Uh, so you, you, you definitely need that. That's why it's automatically selected. Directory browsing is a feature where you want your website directory structure to become available. So if there's no file there, directory browsing. Uh, will automatically be, come and it will show what website, uh, what the structure of the directory is, instead of saying uh, 404 page not found error. HTTP errors, again, these are error codes. So if you wanted to, uh, uh, again, you need those so that if a, if a website's page not found, which is a 404 error, um, it will actually present the page, page not found and it will give a 404 error. Uh, these error messages are customizable as well, so if you wanted to put your logos, etc. on it, you can do, but we will get, we'll come back to that later. Static content is, so this is the content which does not change, it's static, it doesn't talk to any web service. HTTP redirects, I've already explained, is the redirection from one website to another website. It could be externally or external. Web dev publishing, this is acts as, a, as, a, as an FTP, it's for, pub, it's, for web, it's for files, which allows files to be displayed in a more appropriate way, easable way to read on a, on a web site. HTTP logging, this is to log uh, errors. Uh, all the, not just sorry, not the errors, this is to log all the site visits that happen from anywhere, external, internet, and it, and it logs it into a file. Then you can run any good analyzing tool, which will, you can, I mean, look at, you can look at the raw file, but it's very difficult to read unless you understand what's going on. But you can put it through a, a tool, which will generate a report, and it will, it will actually tell you how many, how many visitors, visitors you've had, uh, where they're coming from without relying on anything external. This is within the server. You can do that. So this is custom login. This is when you want to choose your own login. Uh, again, login tools will just ignore those. This, this is ODBC, which is going on to more the database logging. Uh, so we just move on from that because those of us are very... Um, advanced and specific requirements. We just want to set up a basic server. Uh, a basic authentication is where the, f the web server will authenticate uh, using basic, uh, uh, um, basic settings. Centralized SSL certificate is centralized SSL certificate supports enable you to manage SSL server certificates centrally using a file share. Maintaining SSL server certificates on a file sharing simplifies management. So this is really just a management tool. Um, again, you not really, uh, you don't really need this. I would actually stick skip through these because these are all very very specific. 
IP domain, IP and domain restriction, that's if you wanted to use restrictions, i.e. you wanted certain websites to be able to access your website, certain IPs, and, and other IPs not to be able to access your website. So it will actually do a management. Uh, on, on, a, on a basic website, you would not need this. But if you had a specific requirement where you wanted to limit the content, normally this would be done by firewall. So this would not really be used normally. But uh, um, if you wanted to use it, it could be done from here. You could restrict certain web, certain IPs uh, from accessing the site. Windows authentication, again, this is just the methods of authentication. Uh, uh, as like basic authentication, you've got Windows authentication, which is, um, if you want to do, uh, this would be suitable for internally hosted intranet corporate environments where you do Windows authentication. So the logged on user, that authentication will be used to allow or disallow access to the website. Um, but on the internet, you would not be using this, so we will leave that out. We will just go down here. So this is where the FTP server can be installed. Actually, so it is part of a, a role of the IIS. It was previously a separate, separately added. But uh, so all you do is click the FTP server if you wanted to add FTP, uh, FT, FTP sorry, functionality. But we're not going to be doing that in this video. So we'll just move on. IIS Management Console is the management console that you're going to launch to manage IIS. So it's it's a so it's a web front end. Sorry, not web front end. It's a, it's a it's a MMC console which snaps into IIS. But it's a default setting where you don't need to snap anything, and it's just the uh, where you can manage it from. Uh, these are additional management com compatibilities if you want to connect via some um, some different tool. But uh, again, we don't need to worry about those. So we will click, click, uh, click next, and uh, we will. I shall add that in, and I will talk about that. And we will move on from here. Next, and then you install these features. You can always come back and install features um, at, at at another time. At any time, just run the server manager tool and you can add or and remove features at will. Um, so we will just let that install. While that is in, whilst that is installing, I will show you where the management tool will be once it's, it's installed. So you go to control panel. Uh, going to administrative tools and once that installation is complete IIS will appear in here it's not there at the, uh, within the tool so it will appear in here it's not appeared at the moment that's because the installation is not complete but this is where it will appear uh, will, will appear and uh, once the installation is complete we will we can then going to management of IIS and we will be we will be creating a website and uh, following on from the, from the previous video that we done for DNS if you look at that video as well that will show you how to create DNS entries and all about DNS which is essential for a website to function we will just wait for this to complete there okay so um, there is the restart pending so we will need to restart the server So I will restart the server and uh, come back. <laughs> 